two speakers. Uh, first we'll have Alexander Damjanovic, um, then we'll have a uh, second speaker, Alexander Fatig. Okay. Um, uh, it's a uh, quite, uh, it, in, first, at, first at all, I want to thank, uh, I want to express my gratitude, especially to Professor Roy Rakic for the invitation of this very prestigious conference. And also it's my gra great uh, pleasure to have such a charming chairman. <laughs> chairman. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, uh, 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 the, the title of my uh, presentation is uh, The Ethical Challenges of Modern Psychopharmacotherapy. Co-workers of my presentation are Sergio Milovanovic, he is Associate Professor of Psychiatry. I'm also Professor of Psychiatry at the Faculty of Medicine. And Alexander Damjanovic, he is from the Department of Neuroscience. Well, here are some uh, topics of my presentation. And today I will talk something about uh, new professionalism in psychiatry and about some challenges of contemporary psychiatry. Also, I will talk something about very ambivalent and very intriguing uh, thematic uh, pharmacotherapy be between satanization and glorification. Something about some conceptual models of current psychiatry. It's very important also uh, classification and side effects of psychotropic medication. I will also mention some history of the concept of creative psychopharmacology, personalized ph psychopharmacotherapy in psychiatry, and instead of conclusion, uh, I will talk about uh, some new concept about brave new psychiatry and treatment renaissance and brave new psychopharmacotherapy. Okay, as you see, no psychiatry without psychopharmacology. This is a very recent paper from the British Journal of Psychiatry, very prestige, paper, uh, very prestige uh, paper. And in this paper, uh, authors propose that, that psychiatry needs to give more prominence to psychopharmacology in order to promote uh, ensure that psychiatric drugs are used effectively and safely. Although biopsychosocial approach is the mainstream concept in psychiatry, it is not fruitful because it is uh, because it provides no real complex field integration and guidance to the clinicians and researchers. So, what is the reality of contemporary psychiatry? according global economic crisis, strong stigmatization, increased demand for mental health service. Today, maybe in psychiatrists, as an autonomy person, uh, we have some decrease of autonomy and insight, which can lead to the neglecting of the vocation values and ideals established by Hipp Hippocrates' oath. So, Osler, at the beginning of the 20th century said, psychiatry should be a calling, not a business. And how we can help, how, how can psychiatry help to, to the professionalization in medicine? For example, with transdisciplinary principles of the learning organization, with commitment to the person-centered med medicine, with holistic approach, also with commitment to the medicine as a calling, as I previously said, not only as a duty, and commitment to the moral development related to the development of professionalism. So, we have a lot of and very many concepts in psychiatry theory, and theorists. For pessimists and close-minded psychiatrists, that is a curse of conceptual cacophony. But for optimistic psychiatrists and open-minded, that is a blessing of different fragments of a complex puzzle of mental disorder. So, Mental disorders appear complex, dynamic, unique, and mostly obscure. obscure. And this whole characteristic refers also to what is term mental health. Now I will give some brief history about uh, psychopharmacotherapy. As you see, 
At 1950, Mach from Nora coined the term psychopharmacology with studying called opioids. Also, for example, at, uh, at 1949, Cade in Australia discovered the use of lithium compounding mania. Also, for example, at 1954, uh, uh, Leo Sternbach in Austria uh, discovered the first benzodia benzodiazepines. And at the end, uh, for example, at, at 1970s, fluoxetine Prozac tested, but not taken until 1987. So this is a very, for me, interesting question. What is the position of uh, psychopharmacotherapy? As you see, at the early 50s, we have some we had some psychopharmacological revolution with uh, some new medications such as chlorpromazine. Uh, but in 60s and 70s, uh, at, uh, between 60s and 70s, we, we, we had some anti-psychiatric movements uh, with uh, some uh, very famous philosophers such as Foucault, such as uh, maybe uh, another uh, existential philosophers, but they, they, they didn't uh, too much successful with, with their uh, conventions and with their philosophy. So today, in 21st century, we have my body medicine revolution, we have art and science of well-being according to planetary homogenization of practice, ideas, concepts, policies and educational material. So, what did, uh, what, what modern psychopharmacotherapy brings to the psychiatry? For example, exciting explosion of research and new knowledge, new concept of mental disorder, new explanation of mechanism of action of psychiatric drugs, new strategy of the drug, meter, uh, drug treatment, but also a gap between possibility and re reality. And, the, and I also think that is a, some task of modern psychopharmacotherapy to bridging that, that gap between possibility and reality. What are the paradigms of current psychiatry? We have two fundamental categories, a physical body-brain and non-physical soul-mind soul uh, paradigms. We also have four hierarchically uh, paradigms uh, we, which uh, embodying different assumptions about phenomenological nature of mental health and mental disorders which can be recognized. So, these are the ones. We have body paradigm, which frame, uh, in, uh, framework in which biological psychiatry and psychopharmacotherapy operate. The mind and mental function develop as a program maturation of the brain and neural circuits responding to going ongoing experience. We also had, for example, mental and psychosomatic di disorder as a consequence of disturbed brain functioning. Also, effective treatment of mental disorders is modifying by structure, structural and functional neuroplasticity of abnormal brain functions. We have also mind-body paradigm concept framework in which the mind-body medicine operates was that uh, acute and chronic strength mentalization, after that disregulation of hormones, immune, immune dysfunction, all this lead to the cognitive affective and behavioral symptom of mental disorder, but increasing mm -hmm. modalities that have been scientifically accepted by modern psychiatry are ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation, neurofeedback, uh, and bright light therapy. Body spirit, body spirit paradigm based on the belief that the body and spirit are interconnected ontological dimensions of human beings in health and disease. And also body mind spirit paradigm based on the belief that body energy and the mind also and the spirit are interconnected on, in ontological dimensions of human beings in health and disease. According to the Gemi, he is a famous psychiatrist and also philosopher, uh, at the conceptual level today, uh, psychiatry can be, be divided in four, in four uh, 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 approach, as you see. 
dogmatism with uh, some biological reductionism or psychoanalytic uh, orthodoxy, eclecticism, with the famous biopsychosocial model and agnosticism of DSM classification, pluralism from Carl Jaspers, Leighton Heavens, Paul McHugh, Philip Slani, and integrationism by famous Eric Kendall's concept of neuroplasticity. So, dogmatists rigidly, rigidly take one position. Either neuroscience explains everything, or some psychological theory explains everything. Eclecticists escape to take a firm position, so they simply claiming that it's all really complex. Pluralists agree with dogmatists, but they also agree with the eclectics that no single method is sufficient. But integrationists seek to describe a single approach that bridges to the subject-to-object gap, but they are not limited to one approach as in the various dogmatic schools. So, as a conclusion, most, most psychiatrists are dogmatics in practice, claiming to be eclectic in theory, but I think that the pluralist and integrationist concepts are the most promising. So, because I don't want to be so boring, here is some cartoon. And uh, that, uh, that physician, uh, he's probably psychiatrist, uh, says to, her, to his patient, your condition has no symptoms or health risks, but there is a great new pill for it. Okay, here is some classification of mental health medications. Uh, so mental health medications are very mind altering substances. We have a lot of, lot of uh, class of uh, psychotropics, for example, antipsychotics, antidepressants, uh, hypnotics, mood stabilizer. And be beside this, all these wanted therapeutic effects. Every mental health medication may, may induce some side effects which may, may be undesired, unpleasant, and harmful. That is also, I think, uh, some, some kind of, what is the positive proof of global warming? For example, <laughs> at the uh, 18th century, we have underwear with a, with a lot of material. But as the time goes on, as you see in 1990s, we have underwear with, with much less material which are very functional and pragmatic. So I think that is a very same thing, very similar thing with psychopharmacotherapy. But it's very important uh, to, distinct, uh, to distinct some uh, 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 effects. For example, the side effects is any minor or major effect of drug other than desired or expected main therapeutic effects, while adverse effects are always unwanted side effects which are unfavorable, unhealthy, harmful, or interfere with the actions of other medication in some negative ways. I will skip this one. Okay, the risk of the side effects is the major issue in modern psychiatry and modern psychopharmacotherapy. And it is also uh, 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 the cardinal principle in medicine and psychiatry also is primum non nocere. First of all, do not harm. But it's very interesting that according to Jacques Derrida, pharmaco means both remedy and poison. Pharmaco is closely related to pharmakeos, magician or sorcerer, and to the pharmacos, scapegoat. The fact that the remedy and poison are the same substance stresses the double side aspect of psychopharmacotherapy. Also, we had some syntagma toxic psychiatry, as you see. Psycho, uh, uh, toxic psychiatry rooted in simplistic and reductionistic, formistic thinking of information processing and is associated with more harmful side effects and frequently, as I mentioned, called toxic psychiatry. So, many psychiatric med medications are dirty drugs. But the moral, moral philosophy of, of psychopharmacotherapy is related to the safety, tolerability, and acceptability of medication by the particular patient. So, the fun fundamental question here is whether it's given, uh, is whether given pharmacotherapy can be justified regarding the patient's best interest 
effectiveness, cost effectiveness, risk benefit ratio, and patient preference. So, it's a conclusion that the majority, effect, majority of the adverse events during psychopharmacotherapy are avoidable and preventable, but according to some estimation, less than 20% of all adverse reactions are caused by hypersensitivity or idiosyncrasy, which are difficult to predict. So, that is the question. What is the psychopharmacotherapy? Arthur Kurbuk. If you analyze that decision making in psychopharmacolo psychopharmacology, we have a lot of, uh, we have a several decision making. For example, treatment of choice, switching of therapeutic medication, other options. Uh, decision seven is long term approach. I think that is uh, uh, psychopharmacology psychotherapy synthesis of art, of experience, and of uh, some kind of uh, uh, good clinical practice. Here are the famous Freudian metaphor, as you see, about iceberg, which is only small part is above the water, and here are the some uh, 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 problems for us. For example, we have some non-responsive patients. We have some toxic effects for the patients, some partial re response. Uh, the the ma majority of this, this iceberg is a mental model, some personal, personal mastery and vision. And uh, under the water is a social environment and family. It is also a very uh, interesting uh, question uh, about monotherapy or, or, or polypharmacotherapy. What is, uh, what is uh, uh, the therapy for us? What, what is uh, our, uh, how, uh, how I can to say, uh, 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 maybe, maybe I, I, I can, uh, how I can to say, what is, uh, what is our, uh, what leading us to make some uh, therapy? For example, concept one diagnostic category, one drug class no longer fits. So we have some major shift in the treatment philosophy over the past year. We have some rational combination or how we can say combo strategies. It is clear that many patients not only benefit from multiple medication but also polypharmacy regimen may be essential achieving the ma and making their recovery. It is now not uncommon to have a patient several antidepressants, for example, which have different mechanisms of action. It's very similar with anti antipsychotic mood stabilizers on anxiolytics. Here are some uh, uh, examples for the ethical issues arises over the, the for example, depressed patient ability to make decisions concerning treatment. For example, we have an elderly patient that had been diagnosed with depression has recently become gravely ill, requiring dialysis. The question is, if you are not given an effective dosage of antidepressant medication, so the rates increased, is the hit or miss method of treatment with medication ethical? I think that the uh, answer is not difficult. Untreated depression has a high risk of suicide and, uh, and accompanies the disorders. Also, 54% uh, of patients with bipolar disorder are misdiagnosed and having depression. Misdiagnosed and the treatment of the patient with bipolar disorders as a having unipolar disorder, for example, can, can magnify the patient's symptoms. So also, the, 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 the answer is very easy, I think. Should we be quick to treat the patient with medication with misdiagnosis can have serious consequences. Now I will talk something about history of concept of creative psychopharmacology and, and as you see Jonathan Cole coined the term creative psychopharmacology which means the rational use of multiple medications simultaneously to treat difficult illness. Okay, I will skip that. And the concept of personal medicine is based upon the hypothesis that each individual is unique and also that has a specific drug response according to the, some uh, genetic constellation. Also, personal medicine offers proper treatment for the real patient at the right time. So, 
Modern personalized therapy in psychiatry is an emerging therapeutic approach whose full implementation in routine practice can be expected in the near future. Also, pharmacogenomic is a new concept, and that concept tries to interpret uh, some uh, grounds of the monogenetic and multigenetic disorder through the identifying, identifying genes responsible for their genesis and regulation of the function uh, uh, which are aimed of metatherapeutic agents. So, also pharmacogenetic is a narrower concept referring to the analysis of genetic variability responsible for pharmacokinetics and individual drug response. I think that pharmacogenetics is not the key of personal medicine, but a new scientific field uh, with a plenitude of new, new tools to help psychiatrists in the personal patient treatment approach. Okay. The advantage of pharmacogenomics and pharmacogenetics give for us, for our patients, some kind of new hope and promising more assured diagnosis and providing patients uh, with uh, the proper medication at the right time. Particularly promising is the genotypization of poor and fast metabolizer. And instead of uh, conclusion, uh, we have to face with some brave new psychiatry and as you see, we have faced two patient-centered psychiatry with the psycho psychopharmacotherapy as a cornerstone of holistic treatment, as early as possible treatment and science and the practice of well-being. Also, the role of psychiatry and mental health practice has been still fraught with debate and confusion because of fighting against the toxic psychiatry, fighting against for example, stigmatization and fighting against therapeutic nihilism. And here is the last slide. And I, I, uh, I think that, that my expression is not to be too much uh, nihilistic or too much uh, pessimistic. I only, rather be, uh, I, I only rather want to initiate some debate about psychiatry and about psychopharmacotherapy and then you see uh, at this barman, study finds moderate drinking re reduced heart attacking. And this patient said, would you mind filling my prescription? But what said Walter, famous uh, French philosopher? Physicians are human beings who prescribe medications of which they know little for disease about which they know really more or less to the people about whom they know, know nothing. Thank you very much for your attention. Much for that uh, very interesting and engaging talk. Uh, any questions? I would like to ask you a question. You mentioned that you thought that pluralism, uh, pluralist approach, would be a, a promising concept for the future. And if you couple that with developments that you are foreseeing in uh, psychopharmacology, um, what imp what um, do you think that could lead to the path? Of pathologization of more culture bound syndrome, so spirit possession, yes. for example. I have to say that I'm really for synthesis of psychopharmacotherapy and for psychotherapy. I think that is a maybe best way to, to, to treat our patients. So I'm not, I may, maybe pharmacologist, but I'm not especially for uh, psycho psychopharmacotherapy. I'm also for the, I'm not especially for the psycho, uh, psychopharmacotherapist, I'm also for uh, psychotherapy. Okay. So I think that is the, that syn syn synthesis is the best. Doctors, in principle, should be allowed to prescribe such medication for the uh, 
uh, for enhancement purposes. So how would you feel about it? Would you but think I you think that, that we have some guidelines which are very strict. We, we have guidelines which are very strict for, for, uh, another di for a, a lot of disease. For example, we uh, take uh, antidepressants only for uh, depression, uh, antipsychotic only for the psychosis. Uh, I'm very skeptical with that kind of cognitive enhancement. So, I'm very straight, uh, I have some mainstream about that. But is that because you think it won't work? Or because it will be dangerous? Or because there is a lot of personal differences in, met metabol in, in metabolism of the various patients and the various people. So, there is a lot of uh, uh, possibility for the side effects, for example, for, the, for the healthy people. Any further questions? Okay, thank you.